Hey, what's up guys? It's Seth from Workbench, and this week we're going to take a look at stacking paper. No, really, stacking paper. Stacking paper! This week we're going to take a look at creating two simple MoGraph setups that I used on a job recently. Let's get started. So the first setup is basically a paper stack kind of dropping in with a little bit of bend. Let me show you how I created that. So my startup setup is I have one sheet that's bent. It's not animated, it's just bent, as you can see here. And I'm doing that with two setup bend deformer. My first bend deformer gives me a little curl on the edge here. And then my second bend deformer is bending the whole entire page. So there you go there. And then I took the page, rotated it, about 47 degrees in pitch. So then I created another page. And in this page, I have all my bends in the same place, but I have them set to zero. And the reason I have this in here is because we're gonna be using the blend function inside of the cloner in order to go from the bent curled page to the flat laying down page. So let me show you what that one looks like. So you can see here, I have my two bends here, this one flat and that one flat. So they're both set to zero. And then I put each one of them inside of a null because I wanted it to animate from the bottom point here down here. So then my cloner setup is pretty simple too. I have 50 in the Y, I have this set to blend, and I have fixed clones turned on. If I turn this back on, so you can see this is what my setup looks like. And because it's set to blend, it blends from the curled page all the way down to the flat page. Now, let me show you the animation. So in here I have a few setups. Let's start with the plane effector. So my plane effector here, I have it going up in the Y, 477 centimeters. If I turn that one back on, you can see it's just pushing it out of visual space. Then I'm using a linear field to animate it in. Now as part of this, I'm also using the remap function here, and I'm using this gradient in my shader to make the pages disappear so that it actually animates in from a position that I wanted it to see. I didn't want to see it getting cut off at the page. And the reason for this is because I'm going to be using it with an isometric camera. And let me show you that angle. So if I go to that angle, you can see that it would cut off funky and it'd be like halfway up here. So I kind of wanted to be able to see it come down. That's the entire setup for the plane effector. Obviously I'm using a fall off or rather a field and it's just a linear field being animated in the Y. Next in my stack, I have a step effector, and the step effector is using the same linear field, so the animation is the same, except for in the step effector, what I'm doing is, in order for my pages not to intersect, I'm using this step effector to push them back in Z and also up so that they have some spacing between them so that as they animate down, they won't intersect, or at least not visibly intersect. It'll probably still intersect, but it'll be off screen and while it's transparent. So if I turn the plane effector back on, you can see here it comes down and it's stacking. But as you can see, we're still not animating the blend. And I'm doing that with another plane effector. If I turn that plane effector on, this one up here, you can watch and here. Let me show you the next steps. So I'll go back to my cloner. I have a delay effector in here and that's just to give me the nice little bounce I showed you earlier. So I'm gonna turn that off for right now. We don't need it. But I'm going to turn on my plane effector, which is this one here. This one is using a different linear field. And this one is set offset of the other one. I'm going to turn that guy back on. And now if I play back, you can see, let's see it animating back in. Let me show you how this plane effector is set up. And I made the linear field that's controlling the plane effector by just doing a duplicate of it. So it has the same gradient in the color remap. All right, let's take a look at this plane effector. So on this one, I'm basically pushing it up in the Y, and then I'm also pushing it in the Z a little bit. And then in order to use the blend on this one, I'm changing my modify clone here to 100%, so that it is actually changing the blend from completely blended to no blend. So if we play this back, So that's the base of the animation. Now, in order to give it a little more life to it, I added two more things. I added the delay effector, and that's set to spring, 53%, and I'm using position scale rotation. And the reason for that is because I do actually have the blend set to rotate, so it's actually giving a little bit of rotation as well as just position. And finally, this last one's not actually animated, but it gives you a more sense of realism because if you look at the stack, it just looks too perfect. And even when you render it, it has no visual interest to me. Certainly you could use this, but I think it needs a little bit of visual interest. So I went in and I just created a random and this random is really just very simply, I'm just pushing the pages just slightly offset of each other and I'm doing a little bit of rotation. So if I turn that guy back on, you can see 
just gives you just a little bit of extra visual interest. And that's placed at the very bottom of the stack. So it's after all the animation and everything, it's just adding that to it. So if I turn the delay effector back on and I go to my camera view and I hit play here, there's the animation. So one final note is in order for this to render out, you need to set up your shader to use the remap from the field. And how you do that is you go into alpha, go to texture here, and then go to MoGraph and use the color shader. And then in the color shader, under shader, I'm using the color channel. And since I was mapping black and white, that's how this is disappearing away, you can see. So for this particular job, I created a few different types of these, and certainly you can just play with doing variations of this or, you know, make it your own, do it different. This is just how I did this. Let me show you a different setup. It's very similar to this, and it's based on the same setup page stack, but it's animated slightly different. For this one, the particular part of the script was talking about organizing your files and paperwork or whatever. So we thought it'd be interesting to do a bunch of stacks of little sheets and then have them animate together in an interesting way. So let me play this back for you. Kind of bounces out and then sucks all the pages back in. And I'm doing this all with vectors. For this one, my cloner set up the same way, 50 sheets, three centimeters apart. And then I'm using the same setup, my null and my and my cube and my two blend effectors. I'm not using the blend effectors. They're set to zero. I just left them in there because I'm lazy. So now let me turn off all this stuff and then we can start building the effect. So I started off with a random and this random is just the same as it was in the previous one. It's just kind of pushing my stack around. If I turn it off, you can see we got that plain boring stack. And then this one just gives you just a little bit of randomness. Then my next one is this random. This one is creating my messy paper. And you can see here, this is what it does. When I turn it on and off, you can see it just pushes it out. And for all of these, I'm using a linear field, except for one, and I'm using a box field for that one. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. So this is my mess. And then that linear field is just animated in the Y. And also part of this linear field, I have my remap here and I have a contour. So you can see I'm pushing it out when it starts to animate, and then it slowly animates back in. So the idea here is that I wanted to give it a little bit of anticipation and then animate them in. So that's why that it gets pushed out a little bit and then it gets sucked back in. Now, I didn't think this was enough of a push out, so I decided to give it another random on top of that one. It gives it another push out and then pull back in. And that's what this box field is for. This box field does the same thing. It's a fast push out and push back so that essentially the other one will pick up where that one leaves off. So you don't actually visually see it, but it gives you a nice push out and then return back to the original position so that it can continue down its path. So here's our next one here. It's called, it's random push out and back. So now if I play it, push that back, you can see it animates out and then back in. So essentially this is stacked on top of each other and it's just giving me a little extra push. So my next one is the step effector. And if you see what I'm doing with the step effector here is I'm just kind of pulling the pages back together. So if you look at the pages here from the side, I'm using this step effector to just bring my sheets closer together. And then finally, I added a delay effector. And this delay effector is the exact same as the previous one. It's set to spring and I have it set to 44%. So if we go to our camera view here, turn that guy back on, watch our final animation, you can see. It's got a nice little bit of spring left on the back end of that. So that's about it. Take a look at it, play with it, come up with your own. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe because we do a video every week. And if you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and definitely check out the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.